Yeah, you also shared the same producer for your first album as Kyle there. Uh, Tom's told us a few stories yeah, about Owen Morris, a bit of a madhead. Uh, was he the same with you? <laughs> yeah, like, of course he was. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah it's like, I mean, we don't really talk anymore, so. Um, all right. Uh, I think I think it was maybe because I told some stories and he didn't wasn't happy. But right. yeah, like, the last time we saw him was in 2012 um, or 20 whatever released their, their hits album, whatever it was called, Seven Year Setlist. And uh, he was um, we recorded a demo and recorded a few songs, and he was just as mad as ever. And then, but I mean, some of the he lives in Edinburgh now. Oh, right. And he came to a few shows, but I mean, some of the shit we done, I mean, fucking hell, man. It was crazy. I mean, like, it was just not, some of the stuff you would, if you were to even mention it, people just didn't really. I, I was actually in, in, in LA recently. I was with this band called, um, what are they called? Grizz Folk, right? And they were all like, they were all really cool dudes. And I was telling a couple of stories, and they were, I heard them, a, a guy next to them, like one of the band members saying, yeah, that, yeah, that's totally made up. And I was like, what the fuck? Would you just say that's made up? <laughs> He's like, I was like, it's not made up. I was, like, I was telling them a story about us like paddling down the the the, uh, the, the canal, no, the the stream in Crickle, and, and fucking Crickle, like to try and find a pub on, a, on an inflatable canoe. And then a guy came out with a shotgun and like burst it while I was in it and shot it, and burst it. And I think I owned, but he was too. He didn't want to. He didn't want to use any strength because he was so wasted. So I had to like paddle me and him in the one canoe. And then he started peeing. Both of us started peeing in the one canoe and like this blow up canoe to try and keep warm. And it was like half past five in the morning. We were far too. We were right down the aisle, so we we're too far away like to turn back. And then eventually we realised that we we're only in about four four fucking inches of water. So we just got out and just like walked home and the, the fucking and and the, and the, it was horrible, man. But and the, the bats kicking a bit and shit because it was still it wasn't light yet. So I was running a bit from tree to tree trying to hide from the bats. And I ended up getting arrested, <laughs> like and then they searched me for drugs and then they came back to the studio and the police turned over the whole place. It was mental, man. But, <laughs> but, but I mean, some but some of the stuff is uh, and, and that's what I'm saying. I don't even like to repeat some of the stuff because I'm not sure if if, you, if you're even allowed. You know what I mean? It doesn't matter what it's on. It's still it's like you, know, you can't tell that. But it's like, well, I'm sorry. Where was that? Where did you record that album? We recorded the first album in um, in Scarborough, <laughs> and like this, yeah. we recorded the first album in a, in a, a cow shed, and we rented all the gear because. The the James Endicott was saying there was no point putting him in the studio because we went to we went to Brixton, uh, what's that Brixton studio called again? I uh, can't remember. But we went we went there and we, the, somebody put their head through one of the windows, when because somebody somebody sprayed fire extinguisher all over the place when we were having this party and what well, the people shagging and that and like somebody <laughs> fell fell in the bed like because like <coughs> coughing ran into the room and put their head through the window but the window smashed but just with a head shaped hole. So like somebody was through the window and like couldn't get back out, so we had to smash the bits around them so they can get their head out. And then <laughs> I remember James Endicott going, "Well, we're not putting you into another studio because that cost us like so there's a hole through the wall and like all the, the TVs were smashed." Can it's stuff you do when you're a kid because you've read fucking shit about Mick Jagger and Keith Keith Richards there. You know what I mean, so you do it. Yeah, yeah, like yeah exactly. You're supposed to be doing. You know what I mean, oh, fuck, I should be smashing the telly right now. <laughs> like, but uh, yeah, but after that they put us into. Uh, this this place and says you can't cause any bother here. It was a farm, and uh, we were rented loads of gear off this company called Tickle. And like, but Owen Morris and me just met him. But that was when we got introduced to. So at the time we were doing the drugs we were doing, were like we were sharing like a, a gram of coke between like five of us. You know what I mean? That was that would do us. And then by the time yeah. we were home, all these people were doing like a quarter of coke a night. You know what I mean? And it was like fuck. It was uh, things changed and we had money in that and then. It was like yeah. shit, and then even for us, that was a lot at the time. We were only kids, you know what I mean? So like, then Pellet going to start getting involved with how you were taking your drugs and shooting them up your nose, and then fucking hallucinating, like tripping balls, waking up in the middle of the woods, smashing Jaguars, like fucking <laughs> mental. Like, it's like Motley. Like, we used to we used to listen to the new mixes driving Owen's car like as fast as we could. Yeah, I was chasing say, rabbits. Did, did he have a Did he have a Jag then? Yeah, he did. Yeah, yeah, he had that. He had a jag when when we were with him. We ended up driving that somewhere as well. Yeah, he kept on trying to force us to take a shot of it when we were pissed, and I was like, and he was going, go and get some baby in the car. I was going, no, oh, no fucking driver, I'm fucking away with, and I can't even drive. But I can't now. But at the time, I couldn't. <coughs> but um, but uh, yeah, we ended up going to that studio because James ended up saying there's no like no put them to there because the uh, they'll get you, they'll, 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 they'll ruin that last place. They'll never record it again. And we end up getting back there anyway. But um, the next, uh, the 
I, I ended up, I remember one day the police trapped the door and we were like, everyone was fucking sparkled, like just got to sleep. And then the police line got up, like everyone were like at the thing, like we were getting, uh, like we're getting interrogated and like put well, and says, like, who's who damaged the taxi? And we were like, what fucking taxi is this guy on about? <laughs> we all went to a strip club the night before, but nobody could remember being there. And it was like the only strip, strip club in Scarborough where they're getting in there charging you like fucking 45 quid for a Chico, cheeky Vimto. And you're like, Jesus Christ, I'm going to rip here. And like, and like, we were just sitting there and the police are going, like, which one of you stole the taxi? his plates and all this stuff and all the headrests and he stole his ashtray from the taxi. I was like, well, who's got an ashtray in their taxi? It might be 2006, but still, who's got an ashtray in their car? You know I mean? But there was loads of mad stuff going on. And then, so then, eventually, like, Mo, Mo stood forward and was like, we thought he was going to confess and he was like, oh, I thought so. You're, you're the sensible one at the lottery. And we were like, fucking, he's sensible. Crazy Mo. Like, he's got that name for a reason. He's got it tattooed across his chest. And they were like, you know, he's like, he, he was like, no, I'm going to take the blame, sir, because none of these children are going to own up to it. And we were like, you're fuck me. we never done it. So I think he actually did do it, but he was pretending it wasn't him. But then, then after, the police came, after the police came, we ended up, the, the loads, of, loads of people, the whole like sort of farm came with their pitchforks outside and was like, you're, you're not recording here anymore. And like, but they all like stood together to get out. And we were like, fuck, there's only like seven, six of us, maybe seven. And there was like 20 of them. And they came like, they came at night time, like with loads of flocks and like, Whatever you, whatever utensils you're using a farm and we're like you're not recording here anymore so we had to pack our bags and leave the next day <laughs> <laughs> and then but that, that happened in Mono Valley on the second album with Owen Morris as well like like one one night we were, we were recording um, a, a vocal but Owen was like oh you need to get you need to get as high as you can to get to get the more connected with the spirits to record this vocal and I had this Sahari thing and I had, and my face was painted black with this fucking mad shit I was, I was mental and then they set the, the bench on fire the bench was set on fire while I was on it. And it was like, but it was sprayed, so it was just staying in certain areas. It was like, fuck. And I felt like it was a Greek god, and I had these, like, like, like fucking, like, these plants in my hair and shit. And honestly, I actually felt spiritual as fuck, but I was out my tits on, 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 on ease. I was, just, like, I was tripping balls, and I was up so high, and, like, we, 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 we got a nail gun and, like, fucking nailed this big bench to the wall but uh, Owen brought it in so we were like oh that's cool that's fine and then the women who owned the studio came in fucking and I was sitting there like they're meditating singing with vocal while hanging mics from the roof right and, like fucking 20 feet up in the air in Mono Valley Studios and she came in and she went oh for fuck no and she went that's my dad's bench oh he just died that's my daddy's bench it's a memorial you assholes and it was on fire and I'm sitting on it right they're recording this bit. Oh, righty then, vocal, and she just comes in <laughs> and I was like, "Shit!" I was like, "Joe, Joe, sorry, man." I fell off, and it was like, so they ended up getting like fucking. She got a brother and loads of people and loads of people she knew, and they all came up to the studio trying to pitch work out again. And I was like, oh, "Fuck, what's happened again, guys?" <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you! Yeah, it sounds about right, though. It did it just with me with vocals. With vocals, it was like, right, you get off your head now, and then we're gonna start. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you still, you still have weird techniques. He was like, just trying to make you laugh when it was dead serious, so that someone else would come out of you. And then if it was like, if it was, if it was like too, if you were, I mean, see on the first record when I'm singing, you could hear it like going, you could hear me like a lot of the words, like if you read the. Like the actual lyrics I wrote, but they're not right. It's like I say, tight, tight clench wrist when it's like maybe be tight clench wrist because I'm fucking away with it. Like, <laughs> they, well, we used to have, we had these like e ectos that were like uh, blue speckled shark keys, and it was like we used to like we used to put them them every night, and it was like these speckled things, and everyone was tripping balls like, and I was doing my vocal, <laughs> just going like, and you could hear my my jaw kind of like just. <laughs> 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 like, but honestly, like some of the some of the lyrics, I'm like, why? How did he not spot that up as a producer? And it's like, well, he's like, it went to fucking number one, didn't it? But why would you bring it up again? 